the biggest challenge that science is facing in the 21st century is to unite two great theories of physics. One which lies at the quantum realm, that is quantum mechanics, and another which lies defining gravity, that is Einstein's general theory of relativity. In order to unite these two great pillars of achievements, scientists have been involved for quite some number of years in defining mathematical frameworks, using theories, etc. Amongst all the theories that has yet been discovered, string theory seems to be quite promising. Now, string theory is trying to define the fundamental interaction of particles, not as particles anymore, but something like a string-like one-dimensional ribbon which uh, vibrates around the space-time. And each of the vibrations are responsible for creating certain particles. And maybe one of those vibrations will produce graviton, which is considered to be the holy grail of physics. And fundamentally, this graviton will help Help us to define and use gravity in the standard model. In today's video, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give you a, a basic introduction on what is string theory. I'm keeping the mathematics apart because the mathematics is too complex uh, and it falls outside the scope of today's video. So I would be defining what is string theory, what are the emerging factors of string theory, why do we need string theory, and what is the future of string theory, and what are the basic fundamentals of string theory. I can promise you this video is going to be too exciting for you because we are moving out of the common sense of physics and mathematics that we know and we are diving deep into something which is too fascinating for all of us to know. My name is Shaunak and you're watching this video on my channel Physics for Students and I welcome you to watch this video an introduction to string theory. So first we need to know what is string theory. So string theory is an attempt to unite the two pillars of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics and Albert Einstein's theory of relativity with a framework that can explain all of physical reality. Now, uh, if you have watched my other video, which is called Introduction to Quantum Gravity, I have defined uh, the concept of quantum gravity much in details, although string theory is basically one of the, uh, you know, candidate theory of quantum gravity. The basic idea is that quantum mechanics, which defines quantum fluctuations and everything on a Planck scale is being defined and uh, it has been successful. I mean to say quantum theory along with quantum field, um, uh, elementary particles at a subatomic level has been quite okay. And the greatest uh, discoveries has been uh, using Einstein's field equation in order to define gravity. Now, when we are using the quantum fluctuations at a Planck level, it can be black hole, it can be defining uh, the, the, the position of the early universe, we are finding some difficulties. That means gravity as a whole doesn't work really at the quantum scale. So in order to do that, uh, the physicists and mathematicians have developed certain theories and among that, string theory is one of them. So string theory just is one of the candidate theory of quantum gravity is trying to get a kind of a marriage between the two small realm that is quantum mechanics and the two big that is uh, general theory of relativity and defining reality what do we mean by reality on a physics sense to uh, get uh, these two things together so here is a quick definition of string theory the name string theory comes from the modeling of subatomic particles like one dimensional string like entities as we will see further in the video that uh, subatomic particles starting from uh, Niels Bohr uh, model and then it further went into quarks and uh, gluons and photons and everything were defined just as particles. But string theory claims that uh, the particles are now something behaving just like string, just like ribbons, just like threads. Why? That we will come to know. Definitely there is a reason. Now once we are defining those uh, subatomic particles on a one-dimensional string-like behavior, these strings behavior, this, these strings rather vibrates along space-time. And once it vibrates, it produces certain, certain phenomena which we are yet to discover. So the word string actually comes from a tiny one-dimensional just like the thread or a string. 
So <clears throat> it is the most popular theory, as you can see on the screen, of quantum gravity, uh, uh, which attempts to reconcile the very big general relativity and the very small quantum theory and fundamentally leading to something which Einstein also dreamt uh, and he struggled during his last days, that is a theory of everything, a grand unified theory. So among the many theories like quantum, uh, the loop quantum gravity and several others, you can look into my other video of quantum gravity where I've dealt a little bit the more in detail. String theory in order to further go into string theory and find out those vibration of particles and the monstrous mathematics that we deal with, first of all is that how do string theory really came into play into physics? Let us find it in the next part of our video. Amicus Plato Amicus Aristoteles, Magis Amica Veritas. I love Aristotle, I love Plato, but I love above all the truth. Now, this is a famous Latin quotation, sorry for my wrong pronunciation, might it have been, that it was proposed and first told by Sir Isaac Newton, and it was his love for finding the truth that we found something astounding. Philosophy Naturalis Principia Mathematica, at least I consider to be one of the greatest revolutionary and seminal work on Principia Mathematica, where once it emerged, the entire world of physics was blown and we first found out that the entire laws of physics was framed into proper laws of uh, uh, mathematical laws. So we all know about Newton's three laws of motions and further details of position, momentum, uh, and his immense contribution to science and mathematics. What is important is that we are now speaking of what is called a classical realm. Now when we talk of classical realm, I really don't want to mean that classical mechanics or classical physics in that way, but a deterministic world a world when we a world where a cannonball when it is flying we can deterministically tell where it where it will flaw, uh, fall if we throw a ball then we can act accurately tell where it will land if i push an object then we can calculate the force and how far will it move so there is a proper deterministic way in which we can calculate uh, classical mechanics dominated uh, from Newton's time until the advent of Albert Einstein and everything was clear and detailed. Classical mechanics is something in, in this aspect, in this video, I'm trying to mention is, is a deterministic world, a world where the laws of planetary motion, motion of object, force, acceleration, momentum are all being guided by proper motion, which I consider to be has changed the entire way we look into space time, that is Dr. Albert Einstein. Now, Albert Einstein's discovery of special and general theory of relativity actually revolutionized the way we look into the world. Special theory of relativity first let us know that there are relativistic effects. Maxwell's equations are formed into relativity. We got some weird uh, and absurd ideas like length contraction, time dilation, twin paradox. Well, I'm not going into that because that is not a part of the video. The basic idea is that special theory of relativity first got the relativistic effects and now we further move into, uh, uh, you know, uh, into uh, relativity. So the classical uh, deterministic world is now, I won't say replaced, is now being found out with relativity. The final blow came in 1915, as you can see on the screen, with the uh, greatest, uh, uh, you know, discovery that revolutionized the space-time that we look is general theory of relativity. Uh, we now know that gravity is no more a fictitious force, but it is just a, a curvature of space-time. It is the presence of mass that causes the space-time. So Einstein's field equation on the left-hand side uh, has uh, determines how much the space is curved, and the right-hand side, the stress-energy-momentum tensor, defines that the presence of mass and how it causes a change in the curvature of space and it is this curvature which ultimately leads to what we call gravity. So uh, start the, uh, from moving on from classical mechanics, we are now into a relativistic world. General theory of relativity revolutionized entirely the way we look into space and time. That means we are considering gravity not as a force but as something which causes a dent in the space-time and technically it is called geodesics and these geodesics leads to curvature where we call it as gravity. So starting from starlight bending to gravitational redshift to GPS, it revolutionized physics. 
I have made a lot of videos on general theory of relativity. You can go into my playlist and check it out. But still, we are not into the realm where things would become really bizarre and wizard. Enter another great genius, Werner Heisenberg. Now, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which is particularly known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, is any of a variety of mathematical inequalities asserting a fundamental limit to the accuracy with which the values for certain pairs of physical quantities of a particle such as position say x and momentum p can be predicted from initial conditions it was first introduced in 1927 by the german physicist werner heisenberg the uncertainty principle states that the more precisely the position of some particle is determined, the less precisely its momentum can be predicted from initial conditions that and now vice we are versa. into a probabilistic world moving out from a deterministic world. Why? Because all these uh, position and momentum which carried a definitive meaning in the uh, in the classical world of Newton that is a deterministic world doesn't carry any meaning that means we cannot find out position and momentum precisely what we can find out is a probability what we can find out that there is a chance that we might find the photon or the electron at a specific position and that is basically the idea of which which uh, Heisenberg found out now once we moved out from the deterministic world to probabilistic world, everything becomes totally different. That means neither we can define, neither we can ascertain. All we can do is just probability, chance and chance. Now, with this Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, what happened is that when we are trying to measure something on a subatomic level, we only find out the probability. And by squaring the value, which is called probability density, we can tell that, okay, the electron or the subatomic particle can be or might be or it has got how much amount of chance to be in a particular position. Now, let us apply it to a uh, to uh, to the position when we are trying to define black hole. We all know black hole, so nothing uh, to tell much about that. But when we are defining black hole and when there is a singularity which is obtained by the collapse of the black hole or otherwise, what we are finding is that mass, space, time and everything is being confined to a very small, infinite small, small space where everything is very dense. The curvature of space-time is infinite, mass, energy, everything is contained in a very, very small, minuscule space which can be defined as a Planck scale. Now what is happening is that the quantum mechanical, no more that the classical mechanics dominates here, but quantum mechanical effect starts. So when we are trying to use the general theory of relativity at that Planck scale, at that position, at that infinite small, small point, we are unable to find out. The mathematics crashes, there is everything, there is a problem. Why? Because the quantum mechanical effects are taking over and quantum mechanics means uncertainty and we are unable to find anything specific, anything particular on that precise place. So Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and general theory of relativity, when we are trying to define either at a quantum realm, at a Planck scale, at infinite density, at singularity, breaks down. Now, <clears throat> the most important thing is that the nature of the gravitational interaction, which was dealt with Einstein's general theory of relativity, in particular is the equivalence of gravitational and in inertial mass. That means, which allows to represent gravity as a nature of space-time. This is very important. General theory of relativity deals gravity as a nature of space-time, but as you can see on the screen, that in uh, <clears throat> in case of quantum field theory or quantum mechanics, it is a field that is propagating around a space. So, what is happening? There is a marked difference in terms of reconciling, which string theory really comes into play, is that gravity the uh, equivalence principles, the curvature of space-time are basically the properties of uh, uh, space-time, the curvature, the gravity, the geodesics. Here, is what is happening is that in quantum mechanics, everything is propagating through a uniform field or maybe a bumpy field. So there we have got a field where things are very uncertain and here we have got gravity and generativity and tensors where things are very uncertain.
you have explained the uh, the string theory the definition why there is a need for string theory and here in comes the need for the string theory that quantum gravity or quantum mechanics of general relativity has to be constructed on the edifice of something that is what will string theory gives us but in order to go over uh, further into string theory what we need to find out that what are the theories and amongst them uh, or which theory that I mean to say string theory is considered so coming up next are the different theories just a quick glimpse what are called candidate theories of quantum gravity we call them as candidate theories of quantum gravity because these are the whole superset is quantum gravity and the subsets are the candidate theories so right on the screen you can see that there are several other theories like string theory loop quantum gravity asymptotic safety in quantum gravity causal fermion system and causal set theory the first one two uh, the first uh, uh, second and third i have dealt much in details giving a more or less definition in my other video so if you're really interested to know much about loop quantum gravity and asymptotic safety you can go to my video on quantum gravity and look into it however string theory promises to be a very promising and an important theory the problem with asymptotic uh, loop quantum gravity uh, the loop quantum gravity and asymptotic safety i i won't deal it in details but what happens is that particularly in string theory the interaction of particles uh, from the point like particles are reduced to something called string and that is being done by using the master stroke of richard p feynman we will soon see in our video how feynman's diagram which are considered to be the best diagrams to define fundamental interaction of subatomic particles are now being redefined using the same structure into something which is called string theory. Before we go into that, we need to understand that we are all talking about the forces and the interaction. The most important which creates string theory and which leads to quantum gravity is are called four fundamental forces how they are responsible for creating string theory let us find it out in the next part of our video so the four fundamental forces a quick glimpse right on your uh, screen the fundamental interactions also known as fundamental forces are the interactions that do not appear to be reducible to more reductions that means it is fundamental it cannot be divided there are four fundamental interactions which nodes to exist the gravitational electromagnetic interac interactions which produce significant long-range forces whose effects can be seen directly in everyday life and the strong and weak interactions which produce forces at minuscule subatomic distances and govern nuclear reactions each of the known fundamental interactions can be described mathematically as a field the gravitational force is attributed to the curvature of space-time very well defined and structured in einstein's general theory of relativity the other three are discrete quantum fields and their interactions are mediated by elementary particles described by the standard model of physics this is nothing new i mean to say because this is something which we need to define as we are going ahead with string theory so the four fundamental forces electromagnetic strong and weak are already finding a safe house in the standard model of particle physics the problem is with gravity gravity is not being welcomed into the standard model house and that is the quest that is the finding and that is what string theory really builds in i mean to string theory as well as other candidate theories so in order to define and in order to uh, you know put gravity into the safe house of standard model the string theory is being built but most importantly is that is not only the four forces are responsible but something which is carrying the four forces are equally important what are they let us find out in the next part of our video four forces the career of four forces are also called gauge bosons so the force is carrying the force like gravity electromagnetism but there is a career there is something which is carrying the force these are called gauge bosons so uh, there's a quick uh, review right in front of you within the standard model the strong strong interaction is carried on by particles called the gluon and is responsible for quarks binding together to form hadrons such as protons and neutrons 
The weak interaction is carried by particles called W and Z bosons and also acts on the nucleus of atoms mediating radioactive decay. The electromagnetic force carried by photon creates electric and magnetic fields which are responsible Gravity. for the attraction. So the force carrier, as you can see, the four forces discarding gravity, strong, it has got a, uh, I can uh, immediately show you right on the screen. So this is a kind of a, the problem is with gravity. So uh, I mean to say uh, right now in this part of the video, I hope you can understand that it is the problem that is ca coming is with the career. That is, if we do not have a career that is for gravity, it cannot fit in to the standard model. Because in the standard model, if we have got all the careers of all the forces, then it is fine and safe. But the problem of gravity is not only applying general relativity to quantum scale, but because it has got no career. We hypothesize the career of gra gravity is something which is called gravitons but it is not yet fine. But what is graviton? Let us find out a little bit into the next part of our video. So graviton, uh, a quick definition on your screen, is the hypothetical quantum of gravity, an elementary particle that mediates the force of gravitational interaction. The quest is on, the finding is on, the journey is on to find a graviton. It is a hypothetical particle and it mediates the force of gravitational interaction. So because we need a fundamental force career so that the gravity is being well defined in standard model of physics. So that is why we need what is called a graviton. So and let you know that this renormalization perturbative theory and that gravity is a non renormalizable uh, perturbative theory. If you really want to know a little bit more Please uh, look into my video into quantum gravity, which I have given in the I button, because these are important, however, not important in the correct context of string theory. But what is renormalizable? What is non renormalizable? What is a perturbative theory? These things come into flow when we are dealing with quantum gravity, very fundamental to physics and mathematics. If you want, you can go. However, coming back to the context, we now understand that what is a graviton? It is a search, it is a hypothetical particle, which if being found, finds a safe place in the house of standard model and the entire problem is solved. Now, these gravitons, uh, as we will see in further in our video, is something which is formed by vibration of strings. Now, uh, uh, we, you will see in the, in the later part of the video which I will show you is that when these particles, I mean to say the point-like subatomic particles, neutron, proton, quarks, these are, you know, small dots or points. Now, when these point-like particles are being uh, visualized mathematically or otherwise as a string, okay, as just a kind of a ribbon which is vibrating in space-time, then each of these vibration Pro, uh, produces some one of these vibration in some dimension produces a graviton so the uh, why we are finding string theory and uh, you know how the string theory emerged the need for the string understood uh, the basic of string theory we understood the definition of string theory we also understood that why string theory emerged what was the need because we all know that necessity being the mother of invention was definitely a need. The things were not working up, up working up. So uh, now what we need to understand is that after knowing that how string theory emerged, we need to go a little bit more into the details of string theory. We need to understand the fundamentals of string theory. What is the behavior and how things are find out. So let us look a quick glimpse into something very interesting coming up in the next part of our video. So now that we have got a fairly clear idea on what string theory is and why do we need it, now it is the time that we delve deep into the understanding how this elegant theory emerged into. Often a glimpse back to the root clears up the concept of the present. So the development of the string theory first started in the late 1960s as a theory of the strong nuclear force. Now the strong nuclear force or the strong force 
is one of the four fundamental forces of nature we already know. As the name suggests, the strong force is the strongest force of the four. It binds fundamental particles of matter known as quarks to form to large particles. Now, uh, it was Gabriel Veneziano, an Italian scientist around this time, he discovered a mathematical formula that had many of the properties that people were trying to incorporate into a fundamental theory of strong nuclear force. This formula was kind of pulled out of the blue and ultimately Veneziano and others realized within a couple of years that it was actually describing a quantum theory of a string, a one-dimensional uh, extended object. Now, uh, we know that quantum electrodynamics is the relativistic quantum field theory of uh, electrodynamics. In a sense, it describes how light and matter interact and is the first theory where full agreement between quantum mechanics and special relativity is achieved. So, this is the definition as you see on the screen about relativistic quantum field theory and it was later abandoned in favor of quantum chromodynamics, the theory of the strong interaction between quarks which are meditated like gluons. So, subsequently it was realized that the very properties that made string theory unsuitable as a theory of nuclear physics made it a promising theory of this one which is called the quantum theory of gravity. So, most importantly it was basically started with the study of uh, Gabriel Veneziano on the strong force which was later emerged to be a one-dimensional extended object. So, the earliest version of string theory as you can see around about 1974 or so is called the bosonic string theory which incorporated only the class of particles which are known as bosons. So, in 1974 as you can see on the screen John H. Schwartz and this gentleman Joel Schur studied the boson-like pattern of string vibration and found that their pro properties matched exactly those of the graviton. The gravitational forces, hypothetical messenger particle, which I have just talked a few minutes back that if the graviton would have been found, uh, we can uh, definitely fix it in the safe house of the standard model. So, uh, Schwarz and Scherk argued that string theory had failed to catch on because physicists had underestimated its scope. So, they studied the boson-like patterns of string and properties matched with graviton. This led to the development of what is called the bosonic string theory. So, now there were problems. The problems were that this had a critical dimension which is d equals to 26. The theory of fundamental instability, the presence of tachyons additionally. While bosons are critical ingredients of the universe, they are, they are not its only constituents. So, obviously during that time when bosons were, uh, bosonic string theory was emerging, it only considered boson and it didn't take into account fermions, they had the critical dimensions and certain other technical details. So, uh, it was during this time that we need to find out a theory which would also include fermions. So, you see, we need a theory that would unite boson with fermion. So, it was around 1984 to 1994 that string theory emerged. But uh, just a pause before we understand a very important concept needs to be done before that, before we understand super thing theory that is called supersymmetry. Now, what is supersymmetry? Supersymmetry has evolved to address internal inconsistencies that arose in attempts to unify the forces in the standard model of particle physics. So, right hand side on your screen, you can see that uh, it was developed uh, just to meet the inconsistencies of, uh, of the standard model. So, the supersymmetry is basically is a space-time symmetry between two, uh, you know, basic classes of particles. Here is a fermion and here is a boson. So, you know, you know there is a kind of a symmetry in between. So, uh, the uh, fermions, uh, bosons which have a kind of an integer valued spin and followed bosine sense statistics and fermions obviously have a half integer valued spin and followed Fermi Dirac statistics. Now, in supersymmetry, each particle from one class would have an associated particle in the other which is known as superpartner. 
So as in all what you can see that supersymmetry is an essential feature of supergravity, number one, the quantum field theory of the gravitational force and of string theory which is an ambitious attempt to provide a self-consistent quantum theory unifying all the particles and forces in nature. So uh, this is essential that uh, why uh, the question is that why it was supersymmetry uh, uh, before we go into superstring theory. So I just wanted to give you an idea of what is supersymmetry is all about. It developed due to some inconsistencies of the standard model and now it incorporates, tries to incorporate supergravity, quantum field theory and gravitational force. Okay, so what is supersymmetry? For example, I would like to give you a very simple example. So uh, for example, if it is a square, right? So square has a fourfold symmetry, we all know. Uh, when it is rotated to 90 degrees, 80 and 27 degrees, it maintains the symmetry. It appears symmetric after undergoing transformation, right? Now see, uh, we know that fermion are actually half integer value spin and follow the Fermi direct statistics, where a boson are integer value spin which followed both Einstein statistics. The main idea is that there should be a symmetry which occurs between both of them, right? So uh, this is very, very important and each particle which I told you in supersymmetry forms one class which have an associated uh, partner uh, which is on a super partner. For example, electron should have a selectron or something like that. So this is basically the idea of a super, super symmetry and just I wanted to give you uh, using a very, uh, you know, easy example of the square that how it maintains its symmetry. So just to give you the basic idea that in supersymmetry fermions and bosons are getting interest transferred without changing the structure. So symmetry and supersymmetry. Symmetry is something just with the squares example you understand this is something which would maintain it. That means in physics the symmetry of a physical system is a physical or mathematical feature of the system that is preserved or remains unchanged during so, uh, any kind of a transformation, just like these squares in uh, the in, in these uh, standard model also, when the fermions and bosons are interchanging, the symmetry is being maintained. Okay, so now we uh, come back to what is called as uh, you know super strength theory. So uh, now that we have understood super symmetry, it will be easy for us to understand. So super strength theory is a sh shorthand you can call of super symmetric strength theory. Because unlike bosonic string theory, it is a version of the string theory that accounts for both fermions and bosons. So attempts to explain the particles of fundamental forces, it accounts both bosons and fermions. And uh, string theories that include fermionic vibrations are known as super string theories. No supersymmetric particles till now have been found at Large Hadron Collider. And out of that, five consistent versions of the string theories emerge. I'm coming to that, but I would like to repeat one more thing is that it is the version of string theory that accounts of both fermions and bosons and incorporates supersymmetry to model gravity. So we have just seen that initially we started with what is called a bosonic theory. There were problems. We It considered only bosons and it discarded fermions. Uh, prior to that, we started string theory uh, uh, taking into account the study of strong force. Uh, the, it has many complications including dimension of 26 and now uh, we have found super string theory. We understood what is a super symmetry, things which doesn't change and fermions and bosons even they are changing the symmetry is, mentioned, is maintained. Five consistent theories of strings have emerged. Okay, so uh, let us look into a quick recap what we have understood. The fundamental building blocks of reality are basically tiny vibrating strings, right? So string theory is the idea in theoretical physics that reality is made up of infinitesimal vibrating strings. Okay, according to this theory, as the strings vibrate and they twist and fold, they produce effects in many tiny dimensions, just uh, as I have shown you right on the screen, simple examples of strings. Uh, as the strings vibrate, yes, as the strings vibrate, twist and pull, they produce effects into many tiny dimensions. We will deal with dimensions, don't worry. Uh, string theory has been held up as possibly one of the best theory of everything. 
a single framework that could unite general relativity, quantum mechanics, two theories, and analyze almost all physics. What are the five theories that emerged? Number one is what is called type one. We will explain on that. Number two is called type 2A, type 2B, then we have got SO32, we have got E8, E8. So these are the five theories which actually emerged. And we will just in the next section. So what happened is that in the wake of 1984 superstring revolution, Volcan string theory reached up to a great level. This, if anything, it proved a little too successful. It turned out that instead of one superstring theory to explain the universe, we have got these many five theories. So in the next section, we will just uh, touch base. We won't go deep into the mathematics of these five theories, but what they are, because this is important in terms of understanding string theory. Okay, so for the type one, as I have uh, shown you, uh, it is one of the five consistent supersymmetric string theories in ten dimensions. It is the only uh, one whose strings are unoriented and the only one which contains not only closed things but also open strings. So, I've just given you an example what are open strings and closed strings are. So, it contains both open and closed strings uh, at low energies and uh, n equals to 1 type 1 supergravity in 10 dimensions. And in 1990, Edward Witten argued that string theory with the uh, coupling constant G is equivalent to SO32. Don't worry if you don't understand SO32, just to touch base that what actually is uh, a string uh, type 1. So it uh, uh, encounters both open and closed strings and at low energies it is described as n equals to 1. So we quickly move on to the second uh, uh, part of theory which is type 2 and type 2b. So you can say that in theoretical physics type 2 string theory is a unified term that includes both 2a and 2b. So that is why I have written type 2 string theory equals to type 2a and 2b. So at low energies what happens is that it considers 10 dimensions and 32 supercharges. So at low energies type 2a string theory is described by type 2a supergravity and 10 dimension which is non-chiral theory t equals to 10 supersymmetry. The fact that anomalies of this theory is cancelled. Okay. Uh, let me take a pause and let me uh, quickly tell you that I would like to mention chirality is a property of asymmetry, right? Which means the absence of violation of symmetry. So any object or a system is chiral if it is distinguishable from its mirror image that it cannot be superimposed into. So that is clear what is a chiral and a non chiral. So type 2a string theory considers type 2a supergravity, it is non chiral and it takes dimension. Two. So we come quickly to type 2b, which is uh, also considered supergravity. That was non chiral. This is a chiral theory and it takes d equals to 10. That is supersymmetric. So uh, type 2a and type 2b total together with 10 dimensional 32 supercharges consider type 2 strength. We move to a very interesting uh, theory which is called heterotic string theory, as you can understand by the word. Heterotic, it means basically hybrid or combining elements, right? So, uh, heterotic string is closed string, which is hybrid of a super string and a bosonic theory. So, here you can see it is a closed string. So, the uh, here how it happens that heterotic string theory takes basically two parts. It takes the super string theory and the bosonic theory, right? So, it is taking the super string theory because it is a hybrid element, so it should have both of them. So, superstring theory and bosonic string theory. Now, remember in string theory, the left moving and right moving excitations are completely decoupled. That means they are almost cancelled out. And it is possible to construct a single string theory whose left moving excitations are treated as bosonic string, uh, which has got d equals to 26, the early one, while the right moving excitations are treated as superstring. Now, right on your screen, you can see equals to 10 dimensions. Bosonic string theory yeah, uh, is uh, considering the both bosonic string theory and it is propagating into d equals to 26 earlier one. So this gives you a kind of an understanding of what is called heterotic string theory considering both super string theory and bosonic string theory. Super string theory has got d equals to 10 the modern one and the bosonic earlier used to have dimensions d equal to 26. 
Now here you see that 26 minus 10, that means the bosonic minus the superstring, are 16 dimension which is left out. Question is that where is this dimension? It uh, uh, the uh, the mathematics says that it must be curled up in a smooth unimodular lattice. Don't worry. What do we mean by curling up? And this unimodular lattice, you can discard it up. We will come in the next part of the video. We will tell you how this curl up dimensions are there and this is really really interesting. So coming to the last part of heterotic string theory, here it is the heterotic SO32 which considers it is also called HO. It considers only closed strings, right moving uh, vibrations and it is left moving vibration resemble the bosonic string theory and E8 is also called HE. I mean to say this abbreviation HO and HE. It contains only closed strings, right moving vibration resemble the type 2 strings and left moving resembles the bosonic string. Uh, if I am not wrong, if I am not wrong, this E8 I think is called an exceptionally simple theory of everything, which is a kind of a E8 theory uh, and it has been defined by Antony Carrot Lisi on November 6, 2007. I don't want to go much into that because I am uh, pretty much not sure about it. Okay, so where do we stand now? What we have found right now is that we have got a type 1 uh, string theory, this one. We know that it was the uh, earlier bosonic string theory, 26 dimensions. Then we got the type 2b, which is an assimilation of type 2a and uh, this one. So we got E8 and then we got 11 dimensional supergravity and this one. So taken to together all of this, the type 2a, the SO32, the type 2b, the E8, and type 1 and with the 11 dimension of supergravity which are about to come. For is there any theory or is there some place where all these theories can be assimilated into single one? Right, that is the basic objective, right, of uh, theoretical physics that everything should be merged and put into one. So the question lies that all this type 1, type 2, SO32 and this heteroteic and the E8, how can they be assimilated? into one single theory. Do we have a theory which resembles or which assimilates all those? Let us find it out in the next part of our video. In the search of a theory which would include all the five uh, string theories which we have just read and as well as the 11 dimensional and super gravity, we now come to that uh, you know theory which would include all those and it is called M theory. Now, before we understand what is M theory, there is certain quick uh, one prerequisite that we need to understand. So, first of all, let us find it. What is M theory? Okay. So, uh, as I told you, in order to understand M theory, I will just try to give you a very quick and simple explanation of what is called a supergravity. Now, supergravity is a type of a quantum theory of elementary particles and an interaction that is based on the particle symmetry, which is known as supersymmetry. We already know what it is, and that is naturally including gravity along with other fundamental processes, which are electromagnetic, strong, weak, nuclear force, all those. So, what I can tell is that it is a modern field theory that combines gravitational force along with those forces. So, it is defined design in order to get what is called a, a you know, unified field theory. Like any field theory of gravity, super uh, gravity theory contains a spin 2 field whose quantum is basically a graviton and which is our desired particle we are still trying to find. And supersymmetry requires the graviton field to have a super partner. So, this theory, as it is written on your screen, predicts extra dimension. The maximum limit is 11, 7 dimension plus 4 uh, uh, common dimension. These dimensions, as we cannot see, must be compacted or curled up in the reality. So now that we understand supergravity, you see the M theory definition becomes much clearer. So the theory combines five superstring theories and the supergravity at 11 dimensions together is something which is called an M theory. So here is a kind of a photograph uh, which I have shown you the illustration that type 1, type 2, etc. how they actually meet and that is what is called an M theory. So M theory is the name of a 
unified version of string theory and I can show you the screen this one better. So the idea of M theory is to bring the five different versions of string theory together which we have already done. Each basic particle is created at the most fundamental level by vibrating strings that form different patterns. That means this is important that the standard model of particle physics which uh, shows the fundamental uh, particles which are being produced is now being produced by vibration of strings. Don't worry, we will come. Uh, what do we mean by this? Some extra dimensions, which are those 11 dimensions, must be curled up in some tiny spirals and it lies within the reality. I will, we will also cover that. And M theory would need 11 dimensions to unify a string. So, this is one theory which encompasses all the five string theories which emerged uh, during the past due to research taking into account also the 11 dimensional supergravity. Right. So, M theory is the name for a unified version of Hill theory proposed in 1995 uh, by this great uh, mathematician Edward Witten. At the time of the proposal, there were five variations of the string theory, but Witten put forth the idea which was a manifestation of a single underlying theory. So, here it is, it was conjunctured in 1995, University of Southern California. Now, Edward Witten discovered the mother of all string theories. He found variations, various indications that the perturbative string theories fit together into a coherent non-perturbative theory. I hope you understand because if you have seen my other video in quantum gravity, I pointed out why gravity is non pre normalizable perturbative theory and how it emerges. So, the most important is that the perturbative string theories should fit in together into coherent non perturbative theory which he dubbed M theory. M theory looks like each of the string theories in different physical contexts but does not itself have limits in terms of regime of validity, a major requirement which is for the theory of everything. That means it doesn't have limits on regime and validity. So if I want to take uh, M theory in a nutshell, I would say it is a uh, you know, kind of an attempt to create a theory of everything. Uh, it aims to uh, unify quantum mechanics with general relativity, which is, has been a search uh, for everything. Uh, uh, this uh, M, the M theory M, uh, according to Edward Witten, uh, it is magic mystery of membrane. It might be a mystery or magic when once we find the entire mechanics of that theory. It investigations on M theory had leads, yes, to very important theoretical and pure mathematics and physics research, linking to M theory to experimental focus to find out the extra dimensions, it is still going on and because it provides the existence of graviton, so presumably once we find it, it will be easier for us to do. So what is the current status? So current status M theory is not complete but the mathematics of the approach has been explored much in detail. So far, no experimental support for M theory exists. Some physicists are skeptical that this approach will ever lead to a physical theory describing everything. One feature of M theory has drawn great interest is that it naturally predicts the existence of graviton, right? And which is a spin to particle hypothesized to mediate the gravitational force. Furthermore, M theory naturally predicts a phenomena that resembles black hole evaporation, which I have not covered in this video. So, this is the current status. It's not complete. No experimental support. Mathematical support has been explored and it is elegant. So, now we find a theory or we are trying to find out a theory which encompasses all the five string theories along with supergravity in 11 dimensions. Till now with the video, we have covered almost uh, the most important part of string theory yet some of the fundamental concepts of string theory are still lacking. Some of the fundamental concepts, I mean to say some of the fundamentals which uh, if explored better would lead us to much better understanding and that is coming up in the next part of the video. So now we come to the most important and central idea of this video, the string theory fundamentals. Now in this section what we would be learning about are very important concepts which underlie the entire concept of string theory. 
we would go slowly step by step and we will understand those concepts mostly on an intuitive level because the mathematics we are not considering particularly in this video. So uh, the string theory fundamentals first is that string theory is the idea in theoretical physics that reality is made up of infinite symbol vibrating strings smaller than atoms, electrons or quarks. I try to depict this in this kind of a uh, illustration. So according to this theory, as the string, strings vibrate, twist and fold, they produce effects in many tiny dimensions that humans interpret as everything from particle physics to large scale phenomena like gravity. Fundamentally, what we are doing is that every thing starting from the minuscule to the biggest gravity that is Einstein's general relativity, we are trying to interpret and trying to find in one single theory. So, string theory describes how strings propagate through space and interact with each other. Uh, in a given version of string theory, there is only one kind of string which may look like a small loop or segment of ordinary string and it can vibrate in different ways. So, on distances or scales larger than the string scale, a string will look just like an ordinary particle with its mass, charge and other properties determined by the vibrational state of the string. I mean to say the state in which it is vibrating. In, uh, in this way, all of the different, different elementary particles may be viewed as vibrating strings. In string theory, one of the vibrational states of the strings gives rise to graviton, which we are trying to find it out. So, also it is important that string theory tries to bring together quantum mechanics, general relativity and as I told on large scales, a string look like an ordinary particle and the vibrational states gives rise to graviton. So, as you can see here, I have just given one string. This is the open string in type 1. It uh, shows the developments in uh, certain deep brains. We will come to that. What is a brain? And this is a cool flow string. That the, 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 the relation between this open and this closed string is this one, which is called a vibrational mode. And one of the vibrational modes will result into what is called a graviton. So, other vibrational modes, if you see that one is graviton, what the other leads to, this would lead to properties like photons and gluons, which are important uh, fundamentals in terms of finding out the particles. And in some string theories, the lowest energy vibration of an open string is tachyon, which actually undergoes what is called tachyon condensation. These are the point-like particles. Now, here comes the most important. These are the point-like particles of particle physics, which we really know are being replaced by one-dimensional objects like strings. So, these are point-like particles, like we will say it is an electron, photon, up quark, charm, down quark, these are now being replaced by a single dimensional object which is this one, this string. So string theory describes how these strings propagate through space and interact with each other. Now this is a one dimensional string. Now here is Richard Feynman's famous diagram as you all, we all know. So what happens is that in quantum field theory one typically computes the probabilities of various physical events using the techniques of perturbation theory. This is developed by Richard Feynman. Perturbative quantum field theory uses special diagrams like the Feynman diagrams to organize computations. So far so good. The starting point for string theory is the idea that these point-like particles, these simple points which I just showed you, can be also modeled as one-dimensional object like strings right on your screen. So, the interaction of strings is mostly straightforward, which is defined by generalizing the perturbation theory of uh, quantum mechanics using quantum field theory. So, at the level of Feynman's diagram, this means replacing the one dimensional diagram representing the path of a point particle by a two dimensional surface representing the motion of the particle. So, this is what we are trying to explain and do is that Feynman's diagram, which is uh, central to uh, explain perturbation on quantum level, is now being modeled 
into something which is called a one dimensional string. Why we are making it in one dimension? Definitely there is a reason for calculations to make it easier. We will come to that part also. So uh, this is again uh, just a point particle using Feynman's diagram and now you see it is a kind of a string. So uh, as you see that uh, this string, if I take the length, so uh, at a Planck's level which is 10 to the 1 as 32 or 35, this uh, effect of gravity becomes negligible. Whereas in general laboratory or other you know, large scale experiments, which is this one, this fan and this is a box. What happens at larger scale, this would be indistinguishable from zero dimensional point particles. So if I take a kind of a vibration, which you just saw, let me show you this again. Yeah. So one of those vibrations of this type of particles would be graviton. So the central idea of reducing Feynman's uh, you know, particle interaction diagram to a kind of a string is to make the calculations easier and uh, reducing to such small a Planck scale, the effect of gravity becomes negligible. Okay, so these are the point like particles which are now being replaced by Feynman's diagram, which was prior to Feynman and now it is being replaced into one dimension. So, the string theory rejects the idea of point particles as the fundamental constituent of the theory, which is a central concept in quantum theory. So, when one studies string theory at lower energies, Compared to that of Planck scale, it becomes difficult to see that strings are extended objects. They behave effectively zero-dimensional, that is point-like. So, with this perspective in mind, point-like quantum field theory can be regarded as a sort of effective theory for string uh, for strings at low energies. Okay, so I would like to show you one analogy. Now, this concept of smallness helps us avoiding most of the described problems. Now, it naturally smears out point-like interaction and imposes a certain cut-off scale dictated by the string's length. This yields a consistent and unified picture of quantum theory and general relativity due to the presence of a spin-2 particle state. So, as you can see that this uh, reduction to a single string actually cuts off the string's length and it gives us a consistent and unified theory. Now, naive interaction diagrams appear just as this one, tubes or whole strings or ribbons, uh, you know, and it can be stretched and deformed. So, you can take a look at this picture. Uh, this is something which is called a world sheet, although I have not covered world sheet and uh, we will cover it later. So, this Feynman diagram can be reduced to this, this one can be reduced to this, and this one can be reduced to this. I hope I can make things clear. So, on the top, these are the Feynman's diagrams using the fundamental interactions and how these uh, can be reduced to tubes, right? So, what we can tell is that this limit helps us to overcome the problem. So, now what happens is that the Feynman's diagram, the, the equivalent of Feynman diagrams now can be taken up into tubes and uh, you can see sometimes these tubes, when it becomes strings, they behave like ribbons, right? So, these are the string and ribbons. So, this is uh, the basic idea uh, of uh, the uh, yield, yielding or creation of tubes or creation of string theory or strings of one dimension directly from the, uh, from the Feynman's diagram. So, uh, this is very fundamental how we move from uh, standard models interaction and going into strings. Okay, so there is a concept of extra dimensions which is very prevalent to string theory. A lot of misconceptions somehow are also there, but I would just like to explain it a little bit. Uh, the if what happens is that if we take a kind of a, a four dimensional space time, for example, uh, I mean to say the general uh, Einstein's general relativity or classical mechanics. And we put a sphere around, so it creates a kind of curvature like this. And this curvature is something which is known as geodesics, and we get gravity. It's uh, just classical relativistic mechanics. So this is a four-dimensional space-time. Now, what happens if we take the same four-dimensional space-time and we use the strings to vibrate? So when the strings are vibrating, it produces 
one string it produces a kind of an electron another string produces a neutron maybe another string produces a, a quark and another things produces anything like that so that's how. so what is happening is that in case of vibrations that are required uh, because our usual space time does give the strings enough room to vibrate in all the ways that they need to uh, fully express themselves as all the variety particles are available they are too, just too constrained right so the strings vibrate the vibration produces electrons quarks neutrinos etc each string is a point like particle and each string vibrates in different modes so the, this vibration uh, considering even a space time four dimensional classical relativistic space time is not enough and because it is not enough what we find is it's a lack of space that means we need extra dimensions that means we need space that means we need extra area where these strings would vibrate and eventually lead and produce elementary particles quarks neutrinos which will make up and build the universe so if we take this space and time so we get a one string which is maybe this these are hypothetical particle 1 in one dimension and then particle 2 in two dimension and so on particle 3 4 5 6 and it gets into 11 dimension right so the bosonic string theory which we uh, already has covered it used to yield particles in 26 dimensions hypothetically superstring theory has got 10 dimensions and m theory which is the one which we are currently working with, uh, founded by Edward Witten, requires 11 dimensions. That means these dimensions are required in order to vibrate and produce the constituent particles which will form our universe. Question is that we are unable to see those particles. What is the reason? So the reason is that uh, this is a kind of a compactification which actually happens, right? So, uh, you see this fifth dimension has been compactified into something which we call as a curled up dimension or a cylinder condition. Now, it was during this time that Kaluza, I mean to say Theodore Kaluza, added a special twist to that fifth dimension, making it wrap around what you can see on the left hand side, which is called a cylinder condition. The requirement made something new pop out. Kaluza recovered the usual equations of general relativity in the usual four dimension plus a new equation that replicated the expressions of electromagnetism. After a couple of decades later, Oscar Klein tried to give Kaluza's idea an interpretation in terms of quantum mechanics. He found if this fifth dimension at all existed, it was responsible in some way of electromagnetism and this dimension had been scrunched wrapping back around itself just depicted in the screen. So what happens is that if you can see this part, uh, particular particle that uh, this dimension, this one, ima uh, it, it, uh, imagine an uh, ant living around, wiggling around and it goes around this circle which is our point of view and pretend that this one dimensional line is one world that we observe. Then what we find is this one, this cylinder, these are the larger dimensions. I'm sorry for this writing. I should have written below. Uh, I have taken from Wikipedia. Anyway, so the larger dimensions are on this way and the compact dimensions lies here. So this is the standard analogy. Uh, you know, if a hose pipe is viewed from a sufficient distance, it appears to have only one dimension. However, if you approach close, it discovers that it is a second dimension, which is the circumference. Okay, so now comes the most important part that we have seen here. Let me go back. That this is something where the uh, dimension is being curled up and wiggled around a kind of a hose pipe. Now, there is something which is also called a compactification. This is wrong English, but this is do not care about English. Compactification is a way of modifying the number of dimensions in physical theory. In compactification, some of the extra dimension and assume to close up themselves to box circles. So in the limit uh, of these curled up dimensions become very small and one obtains theory in which space time has effectively lower number of dimensions. So in string theory, uh, as you can see here, this is another uh, cross section of what is called a Calabi-Yau manifold. 
and this is something related to pure map memory, so we are not going into it. That means that we cannot see those extra 10, 11, or 26 dimension because it has been curled up and it has been assumed to close up into some circles. Now, there is also a concept which is called the brain, which is coming from the concept of membrane, which is also another way of uh, using compact definition. So, brain is basically an object which we can have any number of allowed dimensions, and these are some of the popular zero brain of a zero dimensional object, one brain, two brain, P brain, then we have got M5 brain which deals with magnetic charge, and M2 brain which deals with 11 dimensional supergravity. Brain is extremely important. Brain is a, a central part of string theory, although it is dealt separately in pure mathematics. Uh, I would be making another video where I would be exclusively, uh, you know, explaining more about brains. So what we understand is that these dimensions are curled up as shown in five dimension by Kaluza Klein, and later it has been, uh, you know, further modified by mathematicians and physicists. And this compactification is the way in which we are modifying the number of dimension, assuming to close up somewhere where the reality lies. Isn't it really fascinating? We can learn more about this in the next part of the video. But now that we have understood the fundamentals of string theory, it is time that we create a quick uh, recap. So what we learned, this summary, is that we learned what is the string theory, what is the need for string theory. We are in search of a theory of everything, where the quantum mechanics and general relativity are working efficiently. The fundamental forces, the gauge bosons, we understood what is a graviton. We also understood the development of string theory, the bosonic type 1, type 2, another. We found out that these five theories can be merged into one theory, which is the M theory. We also understood the fundamentals of string theory, what it consists about, the vibrations, and from Feynman's diagram, how we can uh, make into single dimensional string, and why do these strings will require dimensions in order to vibrate and produce the constituent particles. And that is why we need the extra dimension. We cannot see those dimensions because it is curled up and compactified. This curling up has been caused by uh, Kaluza Klein and further into Calabia manifold. And brains also are a way of compactification, which I think we can make it a separate video because it is quite long and detailed. So that's it. I think that summarizes the entire content, what we learned right now into string theory. So that's it. I think that I have been able to convey and give you a comprehensive details about what is string theory. But as I was going and studying and researching more about string theory, I find it truly fascinating. Uh, this video is just an introduction of string theory, but I have left apart a lot of very important topics which needs to be dealt separately in separate videos among them the concept of brains needs to be included and read a little bit more uh, what is the uh, what are the different dimensions which are considered calabi yau manifold and many other things string theory just like any other uh, branch of physics is huge is interesting is uh, uh, abstract and that is why it generates a lot of interest among that the M theory, as you have seen, and other candidate theories are still emerging, and we hope that in due process of time, we will find out a proper answer and Einstein's uh, uh, dream to find out a unified field theory or a theory of everything will be fulfilled. The uh, search is on, the physicists are on, the mathematicians are on, you are also watching this video, and I hope that this huge field of string theory will someday emerge and we will find out something which all the mathematicians, I think the entire human race is willing for in order to define mathematics and physics into one single theory. Unification has been a dream for humankind, human uh, race, I would say, right from the, uh, from the dawn of civilization. We have been trying to find out and trying to reframe everything in one single uh, theory. Uh, I have talked that about earlier also, starting from topology and various other phases. What we always try to do is that frame everything in one single place. 
with the advancement of technology, you see that mobile is no more a mobile, television is no more a television. It serves all purpose and it is one single entity which defines everything. Physics and mathematics is not an exception with the technological advancement because there is a huge advancement which has been made in mathematical and theoretical realm and out of that the fruit is that of string theory. Considering the other uh, uh, you know, theories of quantum gravity, string theory seems to be promising and there are a lot of current researches in India and US which is going on on string theory and we hope that very quickly we will find and we will enjoy and find out a day when we find the right answer and we find out the proper marriage between quantum theory, the theory of the minuscule small with the huge one which is general theory of relativity which encompasses gravity. Thank you very much for watching this video on string theory. I promise you that there will be more videos on string theory because there are certain things which really needs to be dealt with much more details. Otherwise, if I would have dealt, the video would have been too long. Thank you for watching. Please put up your comments and let us me know that how I am proceeding and what are the things that I can include and improve on too. Please subscribe and click on the bell icon and click on the all notifications to get all the notifications from Physics for Students. The winter is up here and the uh, Christmas is approaching. I am sure that you will be enjoying and you enjoy and learn and that is basically motive of mine to give you more interesting ideas about physics and mathematics. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will be back soon with something very interesting. Let us keep it as a surprise. Thank you and stay well. Now, you can be a part of our team. You can send your scientific articles, essays, research papers, lesson plans on a particular subject of science. For further details, please write to us at editor at physicsforstudents.com. Stay safe and happy.